Joining us now is Michael Shifter, president of the Inter-American Dialogue. And Michael, how much does this shift on whether or not Juan Guaido can actually get the support of the Venezuelan military? Well, I, th I think in some respects it's a step forward. Uh, he certainly has more uh, support from the Venezuelan military today than he did yesterday. Uh, there was a demonstration of support of some factions, and uh, I think that shows that he, there is making some progress in terms of his strategy. Uh, the question is, well, is it enough to really force the collapse of the regime, which of course is the, which is the uh, objective of Guaido and his supporters? And I think we see today that it wasn't enough to, to force the regime to, to fall, but it's enough to show that there's pressure uh, from the streets and also from some ranks of the armed forces that have turned to Guaido. And the question now is what happens? Will this be used as a way to negotiate with the armed forces or will this be met by massive repression? by the armed forces in, a, in, a, in an attempt to really crack down. And what will be the calculation of the military at this point as they decide what to do, whether to stay loyal to Maduro or indeed to carry out a crackdown if that's what they're ordered to do? Well, I think that they, that they uh, see, uh, the hope is that they will interpret today's results as showing that this process is really building of, of military officers turning towards Guaido and, and abandoning Maduro. And that will say that, well, let's try to make this, instead of having a violent end to this, let's try to have a soft landing and let's try to engage in negotiations to look for some formula that may work to lead ultimately towards a transition. That could be part of their calculations. The other the possibility is that they will see this as a way of real, a real threat to them. They will dig in and they will, uh, there'll be massive repression. I, hopefully that won't happen. I think it can go one or two different ways and hopefully it'll go the first. And how much pressure is the Trump administration trying to put on the situation with the U.S. National Security Advisor calling out three senior members of the Maduro government who he said had pledged to try to move to new rule? Well, I think there's, there's clearly the U.S. is supporting, fully supporting Guaido. Uh, and I think uh, we'll have to see there's a lot of conflicting information and confusing information that's coming out of Caracas. I don't know. Certainly one of the people he mentioned was the Minister of Defense, Padrino. Uh, there have been conversations, but certainly today, Padrino did not did not abandon Maduro. Padrino is still with Maduro. He gave a press conference and he showed that he's still supporting the government. So that hasn't taken place. So there is pressure, but there's also a lot of pressure on the military uh, to stay loyal to Maduro. And meanwhile, Michael, the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has just said that Maduro was apparently prepared to stand down this morning, but the Russians talked him out of it. What do you make of the Secretary of State coming out and saying that? I, I, I'm not sure whether, you know, again, there's been conflicting reports. I'm not sure if that's... Uh, true, and if it is true, I'm not sure how helpful it is, frankly, to, to talk to talk in those terms. And also, what uh, Mr. Bolton said in his uh, comments today about this is the last chance uh, for uh, democratic transition. If not, the Venezuela will sink into a uh, di long-term dictatorship. I think he the imagery uh, evoked the Bay of Pigs in uh, in Cuba, and which lasted a long term. Uh, dictatorship in Cuba, which we still have today. I think in Venezuela, the situation is dramatically different. There's still more possibilities of dialogue. There is an opposition in Venezuela today. There was no opposition in Cuba in the, in the early 1960s. So we have a different situation. I think that that may be not the most helpful way to, to frame it, to say that we have to keep up the pressure, we have to support Juan Guaido and his, his supporters, and look for a peaceful uh, end to this crisis. And just how desperate has the situation become for the people in Venezuela? who are now are also facing these crippling sanctions on oil that the U.S. has it's, imposed. It's hard to overstate. Uh, it really is. I mean, whether you look at figures or whether you look at uh, pictures and the images uh, and, you know, people, 5,000 people a day going to Colombia on the border, it already has a million and a half uh, refugees uh, and there are people that are literally starving to death that are not having every meal, a meal once every couple of days or it really is, the, the images are really heartbreaking and so situation is is, is very, very serious, and there is an urgency to try to reach some sort of resolution. But that resolution could happen through violence or it could happen through uh, more peaceful means. And my hope is that today will, create, will help create the conditions for uh, a negotiated end to this tragedy. Michael Shifter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.